five leadership rules for project managers in consulting. Hi, my name is Johannes Niari. I'm a project manager in strategy consulting and on this channel I want to help you to learn the necessary skills that you need for a successful consulting career. And today I want to talk about five leadership rules that will help you as a project manager in consulting. In a previous video I already talked about what it takes to become a project manager in consulting and I also talked about how I personally made it to project manager. If you want to rewatch the video then click it here in the info box. And in this video, I talk about three essential skills that you need as a project manager. And the first one is to manage projects. The second one is to do sales. And the third is to be good in leadership. And today I want to talk about this third skill that I, um, that I mentioned. And I want to give some tips and some rules that helped me throughout my career and throughout my career as a project manager to lead my team. I have to say that I'm just at the beginning of my journey. So I became project manager last year. So I have about, you know, a good year of experience as a project manager. So it's still a process. It's still an ongoing process for me. But nevertheless, uh, you know, I read a lot about um, leadership. I also uh, made some experiences myself. And I want to just share, you know, five rules that were really applicable and helpful to me. So with that being said, let's jump directly into it. And let's start with rule number one. Rule number one is that you as a leader are responsible and I want to say you are almost responsible for everything. So let me share a, a short story. So I remember at the beginning of my project manager career, I was on a project and we had a presentation um, the next day very, very early. And, you know, as you have it so often, uh, we had a, a large business case, business model, and we had to uh, update some slides, you know, shortly before the meeting and before the presentation um, on the PowerPoint deck. So I had a more junior colleague on this project and I asked him, you know, to copy the numbers from the Excel model to the PowerPoint presentation. And this colleague was quite new. So I made, you know, wrote some detailed instructions on how to do that. Then I had other stuff to do and then I went into the presentation and you know put on the slides and then realized in the middle of the presentation that the numbers were the wrong numbers. And as you can imagine, this was so embarrassing because I was standing in front of all these people from the client and had the wrong numbers on the slide. And of course, you know, um, this was very unfortunate. And after the meeting, of course, I was very, very tempted to make this junior consultant, you know, responsible for the mistake. But then I remembered something that I read in a leadership book. And this book was about, you know, total ownership. And this book says that you as a leader have to take full responsibility for what is happening on a project. Because the thing is that, you know, if you don't take the responsibility, then you don't have the power to change it. And I remember that and I took a step back and asked myself, you know, what have I uh, um, could have done differently? And then I quickly realized, you know, that it was basically my mistake because either my instructions weren't correct or, you know, um, I didn't do quality or enough quality checks. So at the end, it was my responsibility. And realizing that I am responsible for every mistake that is happening, this helped me to implement on this project, you know, more quality checks, um, more uh, or uh, clearer instructions. Um, and I really made sure that this wouldn't happen uh, again. And this story, you know, really illustrated for me that it's so important as a leader to take full responsibility for everything that is happening because otherwise you're not able to influence the project. So let's be honest, in consulting, mistakes happen very, very often. So you have, you know, mistakes in the Excel model, spelling mistakes on the slide and so on. But be aware that you as a consultant and that you as a project manager, you have the full responsibility, even if you're not involved in everything that's going on. But you as a leader, you have to set up the systems, you have to set up the control mechanisms, you have to make sure that people, you know, um, uh, um, are developed enough and have the competence in order to provide great results. So rule number one is that you are responsibility and responsible and make sure that you take on full responsibility every time you work in a project. Then the second rule is that you have to lead up and down. So what do I mean by that? Um, 
you know, another project that I was stuffed on was the following. So we had a very ambitious project partner and this project partner was very, very pushy. And this project partner definitely wanted to make this upsell and wanted to extend this project. So there was a lot of pressure on the project because we wanted, of course, to provide outstanding results. The thing was that the team, the entire team was working very, very long hours for very, you know, for quite some, uh, quite, quite weeks, uh, quite a few weeks. And of course, you know, this really was tough for all the team members because they had to work these long hours and, you know, this was quite challenging. So, of course, my job as a project manager was to lead a team. But the other job that I had to do is, was also, you know, to lead upwards the chain of command. So this means that I not only have to lead my teammates, I also have to lead people above me, like the project partner or like the client. And that's also something that I learned from a book that I read, where it is all about, you know, leading up the chain of command. And this means that you are responsible for providing the information that you have on an operational level as a project manager to take this information and give it up the chain of command. Because very often the project partner and the client, they do not see and they don't have the understanding what is really going on in the project team, for example. So it's your responsibility as a project leader to also take this information and bring it up to the chain of command in order to help your team or to help you know uh, also the more senior people uh, above you to understand what is really going on. And that's exactly what I did on this project. So I escalated and I made clear that the team was working these very, very long hours. And I agreed, you know, with the partner, some mechanisms that we would implement in order to reduce the workload. And this really showed me that it's so important as a project manager, not only to lead your team, so leading downwards the command, but rather also leading upwards the command and really try to manage the project partner and also the client, because otherwise there will be so much pressure on the team and then you will uh, start doing mistakes, then you will you know, create these burnouts in consulting. So it's your responsible, uh, responsibility as a leader to also lead up and down the chain of command. Then rule number three is that you detach and prioritize. So what do I mean by that? Very recently, um, I had a situation where I had two colleagues working on a business case and they were so much into the details of this business case and was a very complex model. And, you know, they were working on that model for quite, uh, you know, a few days and even a few weeks. Then we had to send out a pre-read and... Um, we had a tight deadline because this document was going out to the management. So what happened was that, uh, you know, shortly before we had to send out the document, the pre-read, and the team, you know, the two guys who were responsible for the Excel model, they came to me and said, you know, Janus, the numbers don't add up to 100%. And since this was a very large model, it was really, you know, tough to get all, you know, the things straight. And the deviation was not really large, you know, it was only, you know, behind the comma somewhere, but it didn't add up. And this caused a lot of trouble because they were really nervous because they said, you know, we have a um, uh, we have a bug in the model and so on. But on the other hand, we also had the deadline. We also had the deadline to send out a pre-read. And I knew that, you know, if we had to or if we wanted to fix the bug in the model that we had, you know, to probably um, and that we could not meet the deadline. So what I did in that situation, and I remembered again something that a mentor said to me, Johannes, as a leader, you have to detach and prioritize. And this was exactly what I did. So I took a step back, I tried to uh, take a bird's view uh, on the situation, and I really tried to understand what is important now. I mean, of course, you know, the numbers don't add up to 100%, but we know that the assumptions in the model and that the numbers are in general, uh, you know, the direction of the numbers um, and that this is right, but maybe it's not 100% right in the model at the moment. On the other hand, you know, we had also, you know, this tight deadline for the top management to send out. And it was very early, um, you know, in the project process. And I asked myself, you know, it is, is it so important for the management now to have the exact numbers since, you know, this was still in the hypothesis phase. And I realized, no, it would be probably okay to just, uh, you know, include some ranges instead of exact numbers. And this was exactly what we did. So I decided, okay, guys, Let's forget about fixing the model. It's now important, you know, to get out this document and let's just include ranges because this will be sufficient enough. And then in the next uh, steering committee, we can show the detailed numbers and then we have still time 
uh, to fix the entire model. And this really helped in the situation to one, meet the deadline and also, you know, to meet the project goals because it was very tight. And then at the very beginning, we uh, didn't have really the time, you know, to take care of all the details. But this story illustrated and it, you know, helped me to realize again that it's so important. And this is one of your main jobs um, as a leader that you have to de um, and that you, um, uh, you have to um, detach from the situation and really prioritize because very often your teammates they are into all the operational work and then sometimes it's tough for them to see the overall context and to decide what is important now so as a leader regularly take a step back detach and then make the right prioritization then rule number four is that you have to give room to develop and in the first rule, I said, of course, you as a leader are responsible for everything. Well, the thing is that it's very tempting to micromanage everything because you are the responsible. But on the other hand, you also have to give some room for improvement. So, for example, I was on a project once where we had to prepare a meeting and I had to prepare the meeting together with someone, a more junior consultant, who was responsible for a certain stream. And I, as a project manager, I had a certain storyline in mind. And, you know, this is how I wanted the pre presentation to be. Then when I had a discussion, so a, um, a pre-discussion for the meeting with the more junior consultant, he had prepared a completely different storyline. And, you know, I was very tempted, you know, to say, no, let's make the presentation the way that I wanted because I want, uh, had a sorry, certain storyline in my head. But then I also asked the, uh, the consultant to explain a little bit his uh, thoughts. And he said, you know, that he chose this storyline and this structure of the presentation because there are certain stakeholders, um, you know, that can be convinced through this kind of argumentation. And I personally thought, you know, hmm, might be difficult. But on the other hand, you know, this consultant was much, much, much deeper into his dream. And he was much, much deeper in, um, uh, connected with all of these stakeholders. And he knew these stakeholders much better than I did. So I said, okay, you know, I trust you. You are much uh, more into details. And, you know, you know uh, the situation better uh, on the operational side. So I decided, okay, let's go with your presentation structure. And, you know, this was the right choice because this was exactly what we needed in order to um, convince the stakeholders in this meeting. And this really was a lesson learned for me because I realized again how important it is as a leader, as a project manager in consulting to also leave others the room for improvement. And this, you know, has two purposes. <clears throat> One, very often they know the situation much better than you do because you are not into all of the details. And on the other hand, they also need to make their own mistakes because this is just part of their personal development. So yes, you have to make sure that the quality is right, that everything works, but also you have to trust your teammates that they can make their own decisions and that you don't micromanage. So this is rule number four, that you also leave room to, uh, for development of your people. And then rule number five, the last rule, there are no bad teams, there are only bad leaders. And I was on a project once where uh, I worked with an intern uh, together and this intern, you know, before he came on my project um, was working on a different project. And I, you know, as it is always when, you know, uh, interns move from one to another project, I called the project manager from the other team and asked about, you know, the feedback and what I can expect. And then the feedback was, hmm, we're not very, very satisfied and probably, you know, we won't want to make an offer, but, you know, uh, try your best. Maybe you uh, can develop this person. And when I had the first um, discussions and the first onboarding talks um, with the new intern, I saw some potential and I thought, hmm, you know, I see very, you know, uh, very good strength in, you know, the analytical side and also from the personality fit. Let's give it a try and really let's try to develop this person. And what I did then was that I really invested a lot of time into this intern. So I had weekly calls. I had, you know, very uh, or a lot of discussions with this intern and really tried to work on the topics that this person needed to improve. And after a few weeks, you know, this intern really, really um, learned some new skills, really, really uh, grew into that position and really at the end contributed a lot to the success of this project stream where this intern was working. 
And this showed me again, you know, that is always uh, it's always your responsibility as a leader and also you have the power to lift up the overall performance of your team. And there is a saying, there are no bad teams, there are only bad leaders. And that's what I really believe in. So you as a team lead, you are responsible for lifting up the performance of your team. And this means that you have to invest the time, that you really have to make the effort to really have these one-on-one -on -one meetings, to really have these discussions, to take time to explain things, to you know discuss concepts and to really develop people, to put them on the next level, because this will overall benefit the entire uh, team performance. And this is one of the most important things that you can do as a leader. So these are five rules that I think are very useful as a project manager in consulting. Again, you know, this is just based on my own experience from one year of being a project manager. Of course, I'm interested in what your experiences are. If you are um, want to see more about that, about project management in consulting, please leave a comment below. Also, if you like the video, then subscribe to this channel and leave a thumb up. And with that being said, have a wonderful day. Hope to talk to you soon. Goodbye, Johannes.